It is no secret that the mass production of cars, telephones, computers, and other household goods has led to the accelerated depletion of the Earth's resources. Extraction of the remaining minerals is becoming less efficient and requires more and more energy. Some scientists see the solution in the extraction of resources in space, but it would be more rational to search for them in the oceans. Indeed, according to the data, huge reserves are concentrated underwater that will last for several hundred more years. But what could the new type of mineral extraction turn out to be? A disaster or a solution to the problem of scarcity of resources all around the world? According to the United States Geological Survey, mineral extraction in the United States is growing every year. If in 2016 various metals and minerals were extracted for $71.4 billion, then by 2020 this figure had grown to $82.3 billion. Only the COVID-19 epidemic was able to slightly reduce the mining level. But already in 2021, the agency again notes an increase in growth in resource extraction. At the same time, back in the 1970s, Professor Jay Forrester from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology created the World Global Development Models, where he calculated that the constantly growing demand for resources would turn into a crisis by 2030 to 2050 all over the world. However, commercial companies offered an unusual way out of the future crisis. They decided to start extracting minerals from the ocean, where rare earth metals and minerals were found and confirmed 60 years ago. The most explored area is the Clarion Clipperton Zone CCZ, located in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. It was discovered in 1950 by the American Scripps Institution of Oceanography. The total area of this territory is 4.5 million square kilometers, just under half of the United States' landmass. It is there, at a depth of 3,500 to 5,500 meters, that polymetallic modules are located deposits of rare earth metals that can simply be collected without digging deep. Moreover, as noted by the International Seabed Authority ISA, at the UN, the total reserves of nickel, manganese, and cobalt in this territory exceed all resources on the Earth's surface. However, the extraction of resources at sea depth is not so easy. Companies have to face three problems at once. The first of them is legal. The same International Seabed Authority at the UN has set extremely harsh requirements for companies and countries that are eager to start mining on the ocean floor. Over the 27 years of the organization's existence, only 29 contracts for exploration of the ocean floor have been approved. Moreover, the guarantors are the countries where companies wishing to receive a contract are registered. The second problem is the technical complexity of the work. Mining at a depth of 200 meters is already a difficult task. At this level, the pressure can easily destroy a person in a pressure suit. And at a depth of several kilometers, where it is still cold and dark, only robots can survive. But even creating them is a difficult task for engineers and designers. And any mistake can lead to catastrophic consequences. Just remember the explosion of the Deepwater Horizon oil platform near Louisiana in 2010. Then, the oil spill from the seabed lasted 152 days. During this time, 5 million barrels of oil flowed out, contaminating an area of 1,772 kilometers of the coast. At the same time, we note that the well was located at a depth of 1,500 meters, while the CCZ is located at a depth of 3,500 meters. The third critical problem is the environmental impact. And although many commercial companies argue that the risk is not great, environmentalists warn that careless damage to the ocean ecosystem can cause a problem even worse than climate change today. To understand the depth of the environmental problems of mining on the seabed, it is enough to recall the Discull test invented and carried out by ecologist Hjalmar Thiel in 1989. The essence of the test was to simulate the extraction of resources with the help of a special robot. To do this, the robot plowed the center of an 11-square-kilometer offshore site in the Pacific Ocean with an 8-meter plow. A storm raised from various sediments covered the entire site, burying all marine life alive. After such a visual demonstration, researchers came to this place four more times, the last time in 2015. And as noted by Scientific Reports Journal, traces of the plow remain there even after 30 years and population of soft corals, sponges, and sea anemones never returned. 
Scientists concluded that the impacts of polymetallic nodule mining there may be greater than expected and could potentially lead to an irreversible loss of some ecosystem functions, especially in directly disturbed areas. The result was a petition signed by more than 400 marine scientists and political experts from 44 countries, urging the ISA not to issue decisions on deep-sea resource extraction until scientists understand the risks and dangers associated with this for the smallest inhabitants of the ocean. A lot of the life in the CCZ is very small, but that doesn't mean it's unimportant," says deep ocean marine biologist Diva Amon. Think about our world without insects. It would collapse. However, due to the constant growth demand for electric vehicles, as well as the creation of more and more batteries, the need for rare earth metals is rapidly increasing. Cobalt is becoming especially important, which is more and more difficult to mine on land. Moreover, according to the International Energy Agency, it is necessary to increase its production by 21 times in 2040 in order to successfully switch to green energy throughout the world. And if we consider that more than 60% of the world's reserves of this substance are in the African country of the Congo, for whose attention the United States and China are fighting, then in these conditions, who will listen to the scientific community? As a result, industrial companies are still trying to lobby for the harnessing of rich deposits in ISA. However, so far ISA is holding on and is issuing permits only for exploration, as well as reserving territories for future underwater mines. But commercial companies are becoming more and more aggressive. For instance, the Global Sea Mineral Resources Belgian company has already tested its robotic harvester for the collection of polymetallic nodules in April and May 2021. According to the company, the storm that has risen quickly settles near the combine and does not cause much harm to the environment. In October, the company applied for an international patent for their invention, which means that in the future they can start industrial production of such harvesters. However, scientists are not backing down either. They argue that resource harvesting could have a cascading effect that would pose a problem far worse than global climate change. After all, the oceans, they repeat, are one of the main carbon sinks, utilizing up to 25% of global CO2 emissions per year. While there is no direct evidence yet that mining for polymetallic nodules can become a trigger, they are a major part of the ecosystem of the ocean and are as influential as the Amazon rainforest. They've got living ecosystems on them. Taking those nodules and then using them to make batteries is like making cement out of coral reefs, says Pippa Howard director of the Biodiversity Conservation Organization, Fauna and Flora International. If this goes wrong, it could trigger a series of unintended consequences that mess with ocean stability, ultimately affecting life everywhere on Earth. While the debate continues and scientists are calling to investigate the claims, companies continue to actively explore and prepare for deep-sea mining for new types of resources. Thus, Japan has already carried out an experimental lifting of four tons of minerals off the coast of Okinawa. And Poland has applied for exploration of the territory in the CCZ and is likely to reserve its territory for underwater mines in the future. Therefore, the issue with the extraction of resources from the ocean is only a matter of time, despite the warnings of scientists. The only thing that can help in such a situation is buying time so that ecologists and biologists can fully deal with all the risks involved and warn humanity about it in time. Please share this video with your friends and tell them about the problem of mining deep-sea minerals.